Okay, so now we have question four. It says two balls A and B are thrown simultaneously from different positions of the balcony overlooking the street. Ball A is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 5 meters per second from the top of a balcony and ball B is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 8 meters per second from the bottom of the balcony. Ignore effect of air resistance. Then 4.1 says define the term projectile. So you say projectile is an object upon which the only force acting is the force of gravity, is the force of gravity. Nice. So that's a projectile. And then we know if they don't show you projectile, uh, they will ask you to define free thought. Then 4.2 says calculate the magnitude of the displacement above the balcony of ball A, right? Then above the balcony. Now they just said above the balcony, not above the ground or above the street. So that means the displacement that we are looking for is from here and then all the way to uh, the right. So calculate the magnitude of the displacement above the balcony of ball A. So that means we're going to say uh, what delta Y will be. That's what we are looking for. If we are taking upward as positive, our acceleration automatically becomes negative 9.8 meters per second square. So we are taking up as positive. And then our VI is positive 5 meters per second. But then we know uh, when this board is being thrown upward, it will reach a maximum height. And at the maximum height, we know that the final velocity there has to be 0 meters per second. Then uh, do we have delta time? No. But are we looking for delta time? No. So we'll have to cancel all the formulas with delta time. And then we'll only be left with uh, the formulas with delta y. Now, if you have to pick your formula, remember I already taught you that. So from your formulas, from your formulas, now you are looking for all the formulas without delta t. All the formulas without delta t. So any formula with delta t you won't be using because you are not looking for that delta t. So we have vi plus vf over 2 then delta t. So that means the one that we'll be using is uh, this one here. So we have vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y. Our vf 0, our vi 5, and then 2. Let's be careful with our a. We took upward as positive, so it's negative 9.8. Then we have delta y. This here will give us 25. If we transpose, we have negative 25. And then here we'll have negative 19.6 and then delta y. Dividing both sides by negative 19.6. Then our delta y is supposed to be 25 divided by 19.6. That's equal to 1.28 meters, right? Just like that three marks formula, substitution into the formula, and then the correct answer, right? So that's how it goes. Okay, uh, now they're saying 4.3, if the height of the balcony is 5 meter, show by calculation whether or not uh, ball B reached the maximum height reached by ball A, right? So remember, from here to here, we said uh, it's 1.28 meters. Now they're saying that uh, the height of the balcony is 5 meters. So from here to here is 5 meters, meaning if we have to add with that the whole maximum height to the ground or to the street is 6.28 meters. Now what we are trying to calculate is that uh, we want to confirm if the height reached by ball B 
will it be greater than 6.28 meters or will it be less than 6.28 meters? If it's greater than or if it's equal to, so if the height, let's say if the height of B is either greater or equal to 6.28 meters, we'll say yes, it reached. So it means it reached. But if the height of B will be less than 6.28 meters, then it did not reach. Right. So that's what we are trying to find out here. And then this is a five mark question. Now, let's uh, check that. So we are being told uh, that the V initially there is eight meters per second. But remember, we chose upward as positive. So if upward is positive, uh, then this is eight meters per second. It's going upward as we can see. Then VF, VF, let's use zero because we want to know uh, what will be the height at the maximum height. So we are looking for delta Y. We do not have delta T and we are not looking for delta T. Our acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second. Now that means uh, we are looking for all the formulas with delta Y, but then not delta T. So we can use again the formula that goes VF squared is equals to VI squared plus 2A delta Y, right? So this is the only formula without delta T. Now my VF is zero, my VI eight, and then two, here I have negative 9.8, and then I'm still looking for the delta y. Now, eight square is going to give me 64. If I transpose it here, that's negative 64. Then negative 19.6 delta y. If I divide both sides by negative 19.6, then let me check what is uh, the height that I get. Three point two seven meters, and then looking at three point two seven meters, we can quite tell that that is way lower than that. So now, because our delta y of b is less than six point two eight meters, our conclusion is that it will not reach. It will not reach the maximum height that was reached by all A, right? Okay, so uh, let's look at 4.4. says, calculate the speed at which ball B was moving when ball A reached its maximum height. Calculate the speed at which ball B was moving when ball A reached its maximum height. So in order to be able to calculate that, we would need the time at which a uh, ball at which ball a reached that maximum height so remember we have our maximum height above the balcony was 1.28 meters right and then our acceleration still negative 9.8 meters per second square remember once we choose a uh, upward as positive then we have to make sure in all these questions that we'll answer we stick to that then our our VI was 5 meters per second. And then to the maximum height, our VF is 0 meters per second. But this time around, we are looking for delta T, right? So we have three formulas with delta T, meaning you can choose any. But then if you have an option of choosing any formula, just go for the simplest one. The simplest one is the first one here, VF, VI plus A delta T. So it doesn't have any of the squares there or anything that you have to uh, complicate. So that one is simple, straightforward. So now we have zero. And then here we'll have our initial velocity of five. Then here, that's our negative 9.8 delta T. So if we're calculating, we'll have negative five is equals to negative 9.8 delta T. And then dividing both sides by this negative 9.8, then our delta T has to be 5 divided by 9.8. That's 0 0.51 seconds. But now 
we want to know the speed uh, that ball B will be traveling uh, at during that time. So we're going to have to now use this on ball B to say that, okay, let's now check the speed. So we can say VF. So now we are on ball B. VF is equal to VI plus A and then delta T. So we are looking for the final velocity. Initial velocity, remember, we do have its 8. And then that's negative 9.8. Then our delta T, we're going to have to substitute that value that we got there. So by that time, ball A is at the maximum height. We want to know what is the speed of ball B. So we're going to have 8 plus negative uh, 9.8 times 0 0.51. So our V finally becomes 3. So 3 meters per second. So obviously that makes sense because as ball B is moving upward, we know that as it, move, as it moves upward, it's losing kinetic energy. So after 0 0.51 seconds, the velocity finally is 3 meters per second. Right. Okay, so we have 4.5. It says at what time in minutes will the speed of the two balls be equal, right? So now we understand that we are trying to calculate where the speed of ball A will be equal to the speed of ball B. And note that I'm indicating final velocities because obviously the initial velocities, we can tell that they are different. So obviously we are calculating the time at which the final velocities will be equal, right? Okay, now... Let's consider this. So if we are to write an expression for the final velocity of A, that will be V initially plus A and then delta T. Now the V initially for A, that's 5. And then our acceleration, remember we chose upward as positive. So it's negative 9.8 and then delta T. Now let's call this equation 1 like that. And then let's move to the velocity of B or the speed of B. So this will be VI plus A and then delta T. The VI for B is 8 and then here we have negative 9.8 and then we have delta T. Now this means that uh, we can write that one as equation number 2. So V of FB, this is equation number 2. But then remember we are looking for where uh, the speed of these two will be equal. So eventually we need to equate. But then before we equate, there's something that we need to consider here. In the previous question, we calculated that uh, when ball A reaches its maximum height, which is the speed will be zero meters per second. We found that uh, the speed of ball B at that instant was three meters per second, right? Now from this, we can be able to tell that there is no chance for ball A and ball B to have the same speed while ball A is still moving upward. So at the at the instant when ball A is still moving upward, then there is no chance for ball A and ball B to have the same speed, meaning they will only have the same speed when ball A is now making its way back to the ground here. Right. So with that being said, we can say, Let's assume that at a certain position here, the speed of ball B, remember, ball B, as it goes upward, the speed is decreasing because remember, when the ball is moving upward, the kinetic energy of the ball decreases. So let's say at this particular point above uh, the ground or above the street, uh, the speed is 2 meters per second. Then let's say while ball A is making its way back, maybe it reaches this certain position, let's say, at this position here so we'll call this a and then we'll call this b so at this height above the ground remember the the question is not calculate where they will be they, they will be at the at the same position the question is we must calculate where they will have the same velocity or where they will have the same speed now we do understand that the balls might have the same speed but will be at different positions relative to the ground right so understand that about this question it is possible that we will have the same speed in both these balls but then these balls will not be at the same position so 
let's say A is at a certain position K above the ground and B is at a certain position uh, X above the ground, right? But then when we look at the speed, the speed of this one will be 2 meters per second and then also the speed of B will be 2 meters per second even though they are not at the same position. But what I want you to note here is the fact that we took upward as positive, right? And then if we took upward as positive, remember we said V will be positive and delta Y will be positive for as long as the ball is going upward, right? But then V will be negative and delta Y will be negative the minute uh, the ball starts going downward, right? And then at that certain position there, what is A doing? A is going downward. So that means the 2 here that we have should be indicated as negative 2. So the velocity, remember the 2 is just an example. The velocity, whatever velocity that we're going to get there should be indicated as a negative. But then ball B at that certain position, it is still moving upward. So the velocity that we get there is positive. So what am I saying? In other words, what we should indicate is that uh, the negative velocity of A is equal to negative velocity of B. So they have the same speed at that position, but they're moving in different directions. A is moving downward and B is moving uh, upward, but then the speed is the same. Remember, the speed does not look at the direction. The speed is only the magnitude. Right. So hence they phrased it correctly. They said where they will have the same speed, not the same velocity. So this was for VA, but the negative VA will now be 5 plus a negative 9.8 and then delta T is equals to, now we have to equate it to positive of this. So that's 8. Uh, plus negative 9.8 delta t. Now, if we get rid of the bracket here, we will have negative 5. The negative and negative is a positive. So 9.8 delta t. And then here we have 8 minus 9.8 delta t. Right. So this is what is happening. So same velocity, but different positions and also moving in different directions then that means we'll have 9.8 delta t plus 9.8 delta t if we take this one and transpose it over to this side then this is 8 plus 5. now adding these ones together that's 19.6 delta t is equals to 13. if we divide both sides by 19.6 then our delta t becomes 0 0.66 seconds but then also let's not get carried away. Remember they said they want the time in minutes, right? They want the time in minutes. Now, remember if we have to convert seconds to minutes, we have to divide by 60. So that means we take the 0 0.66 seconds, then divide by 60. So our time will be 0 0.011 minutes.